changes to the industry. I believe there are 90 members. 45 of those are the large centres. I'm an SME. Benedict, should everybody join CCAP? Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big advertising. Thank you. Okay, so that final question. I mean, global issues, geopolitical uh, developments, if there's a fallout, is the Philippine contact industry ready? Or is it insulated? So the, the one that everybody uh, were worried about was really the global, the big global economic crisis that happened a few years ago. And there was a lot of uh, hypothesis as to what's really going to happen with us. And if you look at the numbers, the chart that I showed year and year, we have just been growing year on year on year on year. And the hypothesis that I think got checked out was that you do have potentially some clients that are existing that got impacted and that might translate to some reduction in the business from those particular clients. But it's actually more than made up for uh, the fact that a lot of companies have yet to really consider the notion of centralizing and in their customers, creating shared services, outsourcing is still a big opportunity, and considering to do that offshore is still a big opportunity. So it's still widely a big new market for us. And really, crises like what happened a few years ago in my opinion, and we've seen this a number of times, we've seen it in the numbers, actually accelerates boardroom discussions of companies. We are in a financial crisis. We need to deliver this at a better cost. And that's sometimes when you become more aggressive about let's offshore, let's deliver it out of the Philippines. So that's been our experience. And again, every situation is going to be different. But I think the decisions of board members actually get accelerated when they're facing crisis moments. Benedict Hernandez, TJ Singh, H. Karthik, Jaitip Ghosh, Marife Zamora, Ricky Santiago, and Bradley Paul Norman. Thank you very much for your insights on the Philippine contact industry. Thank you very much. And now we're not we're at the home stretch of the first day of our conference. And to give us a recap and synthesis of the day's events. Let us please call on the Deputy Executive Director for Industry Development of the Information and Communications Technology Office of the Department of Science and Technology. Let us all please welcome Mr. Monchito Ibrahim. Definitely a very insightful uh, discussion there. Thank you, Rico. And you need to leave now because uh, you know you're, you're taking uh, Cebu Pacific. And you know how it is with Cebu Pacific if you're late. Anyway, may uh, hapon sa tanan. In English, uh, good afternoon. I would like to thank Sika for. Uh, tasking me to do the recap for today's session. Specifically the board of uh, directors of uh, SICA, okay? You know, this is what I get for asking them to move my flight from early morning today to uh, yesterday, five o'clock in the afternoon, okay? They made sure that I stay in the room, okay? Take notes of all the, was this the presentation? listen to all the presentations and for me to be able to do this recap. Thank you so much. You're really so mean. <laughs> I understand today's session started at a bit past 10 o'clock. I wasn't here. And uh, we all started with, uh, you know, with our very able uh, moderator for the day, a good friend, Rico Eason giving us a very good foundation for uh, today's uh, session. We started with uh, the welcome address of uh, the two 
City Executives, uh, first uh, the Honorable Mayor of uh, Lapu Lapu City, which is actually where this hotel is located, and then uh, I'm talking of uh, the Honorable Mayor Paz Radasa of Lapu Lapu City, and then uh, followed by uh, the welcome address of uh, the Honorable Mayor of Cebu City, Mayor Michael Rama. And then we heard the keynote message of the Honorable Secretary of uh, the Department of Science and Technology, Mario Montejo, who delivered, uh, delivered the message highlighting the collaborations between the government and the industry, thanking the industry for opening up its arms to government to work together to ensure that we are able to sustain the growth of this industry as well as address emerging challenges and opportunities. He also articulated on initiatives being undertaken by the department to leverage the science and technology to help the industry. I'm basically talking here of uh, the LEAP project as well as uh, Project NOAA for disaster uh, mitigation. That was actually followed by uh, the presentation of uh, the SICA president, Benedict Hernandez, who gave his State of the Industry report where he presented very healthy growth projections for the industry. He also highlighted emerging changes in the customer management market and what changes we need to undertake in order to actually ensure the growth of uh, this sector. He also articulated new strategies to leverage on the opportunities com coming the way of this industry. And these are to expand differentiated services, involvement in multi-sectoral efforts to solve industry issues, and leveraging emerging technologies and CRM like the use of social media, analytical and mobility, analytics and uh, mobility. He also presented the results of the Test Desk Policy Program, highlighted by uh, the presentations uh, uh, given by our, uh, uh, you know, by the trainees of uh, the ongoing programs of uh, TESDA. That was actually followed by uh, the presentation of our good friend from uh, ABS-CBN, the Mr. Digital Marketing uh, guy himself, uh, Donald Lim, who gave us a presentation focused on ensuring a surprise-free future for this industry. It is, the presentation was greatly anchored on social and the use of, uh, or the use of social engagement. He gave us interesting insights on how we can leverage on digital marketing. And then we had lunch. After lunch, of course, we started again a bit late. Our good friend from Gardner, T.J. Singh, presented interesting insights on the outcome of a recent Gardner survey on global industry trends. He says the future of IT and BPO services will be much influenced by four key forces. And these are social networking, mobile technology, big data, and the cloud. It is also interesting to note that the survey results is indicating that by 2016, non-voice, analytics, automation, and cloud-based services will account for 40% of the total BPO market or CMBPO market size. Buyers are now taking a holistic approach to country selection from just being or just providing tactical benefits to its customers to supporting through globalization. And then we had the presentation of uh, Viral of KPMG who presented the global economic outlook in the context of shared services and outsourcing. He pointed out that even as growth in the advanced countries fails to accelerate, emerging, techno or emerging economies has been relatively strong, presenting a new market for the industry. He also touched on the, nature, on the nature of major deals that are being closed in uh, established uh, markets, markets today. Then, of course, that was uh, followed by uh, the very exciting panel discussion that we had here. Did I miss anything? Okay. Uh, you know, with all the panelists articulating on the actual experiences uh, they have in uh, running uh, uh, 
BPO operations uh, in the Philippines, uh, particularly Nila and Cebu. Uh, we had some very interesting uh, questions from uh, the floor. Uh, thank you so much uh, for that. I believe that we actually were able to build a very good foundation for our session tomorrow. Okay? And definitely, these are sessions that you should have missed. So, looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Maraming, maraming salamat po. Thank you very much, Mr. Ibrahim. You know, they told me to leave for the airport, but I said I will finish this first day till the very end. Thank you very much to the Contact Center Association of the Philippines for inviting me once again. And to Cebu, maraming maraming salamat. Tagham salamat to all of you. And just to inform every delegate in this room and those who are outside, Day two of the uh, ICCCE will be at the Radisson Blue Hotel, Cebu City, and the session starts at 9.30 a.m. So day two is not here, but at the Radisson Blue Hotel. Day three, you will be coming back right here at the Shangri-La, and the proceedings will be at the Maktan Ballroom at 10 a.m. So with that, we end this edition, the first day of the IEEE 2013. I'm Rico Hison, reporting live from Cebu. See you tomorrow, bright and early, at 6 in the morning. Maraming maraming salamat po.